Well, my name is Linda Schmidt. I'm a five-year volunteer here at the Alfred Caldwell Lily Pool and I enjoy leading the garden walks because it's such a special place here in, here in Chicago. Caldwell designed it to be a getaway for the people of the city of Chicago, a free getaway, and it still remains so. And it's one of my very favorite places here in the city. So here in the lily pool, we have lots of these, but like fall sasters, boltonias, sneezeweeds and things. But we also have some beautiful real fall asters. And even though they look rough, they're actually very smooth and velvety. And with a really pretty bloom, you know, multiple petals, I think they're around 24 petals surrounding the center disc. And you can see if you look very closely, the composition of the disc, you know, with, uh, and that's the thing that pollinators are interested in. Plus a very pretty red stem on the asters. It's really quite a lovely plant. Although it's very prairie looking. I'm not, not necessarily sure you would put asters in sort of a formal classic garden, but these are wonderful, wonderful for this area, for this garden. So you can see how this surrounds the center disc and it's waiting for a pollinator to land on it. So this is a very attractive plant for them. Yeah. It really is. So I would put this under the false aster category. And again, it's this sort of pretty light purpley one. The centers open as yellow. And then you, you can see here the cones in the center for the pollinators. And also here, purple. So actually, I think they must open as purple and then change to yellow. I'm going to correct myself. So, because this is a fully open center and these are just maturing. So it's a really pretty look both as the purple center and as the yellow center. And they just whoo, sort of shine in the garden. Shine in the garden. They really do. Yeah. One of the last little uh, oxi sunflowers, I think. And these are very interesting, the blooms. And you can tell this is oxide because of this uh, strong center vein with the other veins coming off of it, the toothed leaves. And if you look at it, look at the pattern there on this one that's a very young bloom. It's just kind of swirls around. It's a beautiful pattern. And then here, in the one that's more mature, you can see the cones opened around on the disc. And so this is what the pollinators are looking for. They're looking for these cones. And we're lucky to see this because they've almost finished blooming for the year. And if you move your camera a tiny bit, there's a little violet peeking out. <laughs> a little purple violet. A late bloomer. Although if we have some cool weather, they do repeat bloom. Hmm. Yeah. So this is a nice area. A really so, nice area. Again, we're talking about a late fall garden, so we're lucky to find some brown-eyed Susans remaining. And you can see, if you look at them, the disc, if they're a type of a cone flower, so it's a raised disc, um, and the beautiful yellow uh, petals surrounding the center disc. These are pretty mature. We're at the end of the season, um, so this is pretty hard and dark brown, and that's where they get their name, brown-eyed Susans. Beautiful red stems, very nice plant. And nice to have them in bloom at this time for us all to enjoy. <laughs> you know, so cute, those little diminutives. Often on a mature plant, you see just the giant blooms, but the small ones are just as nice. So here in the lily pool, we were just talking, we have lots and lots of snake root. And snake root is one of the last plants to bloom in the fall. Um, when the flowers bloom, they're pretty attractive. They're in the Eupatorium family, um, so they would be a long-lived cut flower, but it's also poisonous. Snake root is the plant that the legend is uh, Nancy Hanks drank the milk from cows that ate snake root and that caused her death. And so you have to be very careful around this plant. 
it's a sign to us that they can be beautiful, but you really have to understand what they are um, and understand that they can be dangerous for you. And that's why it's named snake root, I think, is because of that danger. Yeah. So earlier we were talking about snakeweed, but the other plant that's here in the lily pool, and we don't have as much of it, is boneset. They're in the same family, but um, boneset has a little bit different look than snakeweed. To my mind, it's always got kind of a raggedy looking gray bloom. Um, even the young blooms are kind of raggedy looking in gray. Narrow leaves, long narrow leaves, um, big center stem, or excuse me, center vein, with very raggedy teeth along the leaf. And that's one of the ways, these are ways that you can tell bone set from snakeweed. Bone set is called bone set, it's a eupatorium, like snakeweed, because Native Americans used to think bone set, if you drank a tea, would help with dengue fever. And somehow dengue fever and breaking bones are related, I'm not quite sure what that is, but also it would be sort of an anesthesia to help you set the bones and relieve the pain of the bones. So that's why it's called bone set. So if we look actually right down here at its base, we can see snakeweed and we can see immediately sort of the difference in the blooms. You know, these are much more like a, sort of that Joe Pye weed we were looking at. These are almost like small little pearls in bloom, very white, gray, kind of long blooms. I think it looks like a raggedy plant in my opinion, which I, <laughs> which is not good because it's very medicinal. It was considered very medicinally useful by the pioneers. And that's just a bad prejudice on my part. It's not the prettiest of the plants. <laughs> no, it's not the prettiest of the plants. So thank you very much for coming on our walk today, our fall walk. You know, a fall garden is something where we can see nature getting ready for winter. So it's a really interesting time to be here. The lily pool is open every day. So I hope you get a chance to come and visit.